22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of all these statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has gods so close to it as the Lord, our God, is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today? The Word of the Lord. does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Whoever walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart, and slanders not with his tongue. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord, who lends not his money at usury, and accepts no bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be disturbed. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the A reading from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. 
And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed. The purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him. Why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person. But the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. The 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. The first reading comes from Deuteronomy 4, 1-2, and 6-8. Moses speaks to the people of Israel, and he encourages them to keep the law of the Lord. This is a major theme throughout the book of Deuteronomy that God has revealed his will to the people of Israel, and therefore they are very blessed. If they keep that law, they will receive the promised land and God will protect them. But if they don't, they'll be punished. Every covenant in ancient times carried a series of blessings and curses. The blessing, the people would receive the land and be blessed. The curse, that they would be cut off from God's ways. And so Moses asked this people to be an example before all the nations so that all the nations, when they see the people, when they see the laws that they're following, could realize that the Lord is acting in their midst. The second reading is from the letter of James, chapter 1, verses 17 to 18, 21 to 22, and 27. This again speaks about how we should follow the good way, that God has blessed us, and there is no change in God. Therefore, we likewise should purify ourselves of impurities, bad habits. We should submit to the word that's planted in our hearts. And one of the examples of this is that we take care of the widows and the orphans. This is a major theme in the letter of James. James says that faith is great, but faith has to be expressed in works. And the work should especially be expressed through helping those who are poor. The phrase widows and orphans in the Old Testament was always seen as a phrase that expressed the idea of those who can't defend themselves, those who have no one to advocate for them. And so we, as Christians, should take care of them. The Gospel is from Mark 7, 1 to 8, 14 to 15, and 21 to 23. The Pharisees and the scribes come up to Jesus and they're confused because they see that the disciples are eating without cleaning their hands. Now technically, it wasn't the law that they had to clean their hands. Remember, the Pharisees took the law and they extended it to the widest possible extent, building a fence around the law. It said that you have to wash your hands before worship, not before eating. But the Pharisees took it that eating is a form of worship and therefore you should wash your hands before. They would sprinkle water on whatever they bought. They would wash pots and bronze dishes. They did all the external actions, but Jesus accuses them of hypocrisy. They're doing the external actions, but they're not purifying their hearts. And so he says that the thing you really should clean is your hearts, your intention. Because it's from evil intentions that fornication, theft, murder, adultery, etc. All these evil things come. And those are the things that make one unclean. And so he reminds us that our external actions, yeah, they're fine. But what's much more important is what's in our heart what we try to do, how we try to follow God's law, and how do we try to follow his example, as we heard in the second reading, serving the poor in a special way. 
and may God bless us. Thank you.